We need to call an ambulance, now. In a state of panic, my hands trembling, I realized I had to act quickly to help my husband, who had collapsed, so I grabbed my cell phone. While trying to reassure my daughter by saying, it's going to be okay, she responded with a calmness that took me by surprise. We don't need an ambulance. It's okay. When I pressed her for the meaning behind her words, an astonishing truth was revealed. My name is Kate. At 34, I currently work part-time mornings at a call center. I reconnected with my husband, Sean, at a high school reunion, where we hit it off and soon started dating. After three years of dating, we got married, and now we have a daughter, Mia, in the first grade. With the addition of Mia to our family and the increased living expenses, Sean felt the need to support our family more than ever, resulting in him working long hours of overtime. However, he always made time for Mia and me, prioritizing us despite his busy schedule. Feeling cherished, I never minded our time apart due to our conflicting schedules. Sean is a pharmacist by profession. He always came home immediately if I caught a cold, taking care of me with great diligence. I know more about the human body than most, so tell me where it hurts. I'll prepare the right medicine for your cold and even give you a massage," Sean would say, tenderly caring for me in my frail state. Mia would look gloomy whenever I was sick, saying, Mom, get well soon so you can be happy again. I wanted to recover quickly for her sake and devoted myself to treatment. Seeing my discomfort, Mia would turn to Sean and say, Dad, give Mom the magic medicine. Agreeing, Sean would then hand me herbal and cold medicine. In our family, we refer to medicine as a magic medicine because even the bitter ones were bravely taken by Mia, believing in their magical power. Having frequently fallen ill since childhood, I too believed in the magic of these medicines, which seemed to help me recover by the next day. For Mia's sake, I'll take the magic medicine and get well. I'd say, taking the bitter medicine to cheer up Mia. By the next day, I was feeling much better. Thanks to you, Mia, I'm all better. Thank you, I'd tell her. No, it was thanks to the magic medicine, she'd say with a smile, heading off to school. Seems like you're all better now. I'm off to work then. Take it easy today, Sean would say, showing his concern before leaving for work. Determined to make up for the worry I caused them, I decided to prepare a slightly lavish dinner as a thank you. I went all out with the dinner prep, almost as if it were someone's birthday. Mia, returning home in the afternoon, was thrilled by the aroma. The smell is amazing. My friends and I talked about it all the way home. You made this, a mom. I'm so looking forward to tonight, she exclaimed, eagerly finishing her homework in anticipation. Seeing her happy smile made me feel all the effort was worthwhile. As evening approached and I expected Sean to return soon, I began setting the table with plates and cutlery. Mia helped by arranging the glasses when a call from Sean came in on my cell phone. I'm sorry. I thought I could come home early today, but a junior at work needs some serious advice. I'm going to take him out for dinner, so don't wait up for me tonight. Really sorry about this, Sean rushed on, leaving no room for me to interject before hanging up. Understanding the importance, I put my phone down and relayed to Mia, Dad has an important discussion with a colleague tonight, so he won't need dinner. It's a shame, but how about we eat together, just the two of us? At this, Mia visibly slumped, disappointed. Really? Dad's not eating? Mom went through all that trouble. Mia tried to suppress her sadness, showing concern for me instead. Seeing how kind my daughter has grown made my heart warm, and I felt happy. Although the meal I prepared for the three of us was ruined, my daughter's actions blew away the sadness. As long as Mia eats, I'm happy, so it's all right. Then, I'll eat a lot, even Dad's share. She said with a smile, happily taking big bites. After cleaning up together, we enjoyed dessert and had a relaxing time. I thought Dad would join us for dessert, but he didn't come home. Yeah! I'm worried about dad too, but let's go to bed soon. Saying this, Mia and I waited for Sean's return, but he never came, so we went to bed. That night, Sean didn't return. He came home around 5 in the morning. Perhaps because it was early, he opened the front door slowly, trying not to wake us. 
I was preparing lunch and breakfast, so I noticed and went to greet him. Seeing me, Sean quickly apologized. I missed the last train and had to wait for the first one. Sorry for worrying you. I realized he must have had an important meeting to miss his train, so I stopped complaining and said. Go take a bath. I'll make breakfast for you in the meantime. Thanks, I will. Later, Mia woke up, and the three of us had breakfast together. She kept telling Sean about the previous night's dinner. Dad, why do you always miss the important dinners? Mom made an amazing meal yesterday. I see. I'm sorry, Kate. I'll definitely come home early today. With that promise, we all left the house. I couldn't make as luxurious a meal as yesterday, but I decided to make Mia's favorite, an omelet, and headed to the supermarket after work. There, I ran into Mia's friend's mom. Hey, Mia's mom, long time no see. How have you been? Hi, Nina's mom, what a coincidence. I've been having some health issues lately. Maybe it's because of my age? While chatting, she made a suggestion. How about letting Mia stay over at our place next time? That way, Kate, you can have some time to yourself. Nina loves Mia, so she'd be thrilled to have her over. Really? I might just take you up on that offer. With that, we set a date and parted ways. When I got home and Mia returned, I told her about the encounter. Welcome back. I met Nina's mom today, and she invited you to stay over at their place. Hearing this, Mia's face lit up with excitement. Really? At Nina's place? Can I really go? Of course. Just be a good girl. Nina's mom said this Saturday. Mia was excited to prepare for the sleepover. Nina seemed just as excited. I was grateful to Nina's mom for her kind offer. That night, Sean came home early. Mia happily ran to greet him at the door. Welcome back. Guess what? I'm going to stay at Nina's place. She was so happy, she immediately told Sean about it. After telling Sean about her plans and my health, he responded. Then, I'll go out on Saturday too. Take the chance to have lunch and shop by yourself. I'll pick up Mia from Nina's on Sunday. Really? Well, if you insist, I'll take you up on that. I was thankful for Nina's mom and Sean's consideration. After dinner, Sean remembered something and pulled an envelope from his bag. Daddy, what's that? Mia asked, fluttering her feet with curiosity. Sean said with pride, I'm glad you asked, and handed it to me. This is something special I bought for mom. You know how mom is not very strong, right? It's magical ingredients I bought specially to help her get better. Hearing this, Mia seemed really happy. Mom gets sick a lot, doesn't she? With these magical foods, mom will get even stronger. That's great. Did you buy this just for me? It must have been expensive. But thank you. The thought of Sean going out of his way to buy it for me, concerned about my health, filled me with gratitude and guilt. The most important thing is for you to get better. Eating it every day will have an outstanding effect. Sean said with a smile, telling me not to worry as he handed it over. However, afterward, he clapped his hands loudly in front of Mia and me, and apologized with his hands together. I'm really sorry, but from tomorrow until Friday, work is going to be incredibly busy, and I might come home late. Sean deeply apologized, his forehead touching the desk. Mia looked displeased. Of course, I was dissatisfied too, but since he was working hard for us, I couldn't say anything. Holding back my sad feelings, I managed to soothe Mia. Mia, daddy is working hard for us. Let's go to the amusement park on his next day off, okay? With that promise, I managed to cheer her up. Sean gave me a thankful look with his eyes, and we decided to go to bed. I decided to eat some before sleeping right away. When I took it out of the bag, it was a food I had never seen before. It looked black and dried, but when I tasted it, it was easy to eat, like fruit. However, it seemed to have a strange effect on my body, as I woke up at 2 a.m. After the headache struck, my stomach churned, and I rushed to the bathroom. 
Since Mia and Sean didn't have any such symptoms, I knew dinner wasn't the cause. Did I eat something else just by myself? Thinking back on what I alone had eaten, I remembered the food Sean gave me. Not having asked for details about its effects, I assumed that must have been the cause. My stomach still felt uneasy, but I managed to sleep with my eyes closed. When I woke up in the morning, Sean had left a note on the table and was already gone. The note simply read, thanks for the lunch. Call me if anything happens. I'm off then. I hesitated to report that the special item he bought didn't suit me, not wanting to disturb his work, and decided to email him later. And, I thought it best to avoid consuming this ingredient for a while. A little later, Mia woke up and, while eating breakfast, she cheerfully said, I'm thinking about what to do when I have a sleepover with Mina today. After preparing for Mia's school and my work, we left the house together. Will we not see dad for a while starting today? Hmm, I think he'll be home when you're sleeping, and he'll leave for work before you wake up. So, it might be good to write a letter if something comes up. That's a good idea, Mia agreed, and we commuted as usual, engaging in light conversation. When I arrived at work and was getting ready, I received an email from Sean. Don't forget to eat it today. It's important to continue every day, it read. I replied to the email, asking, what effects does it have? The response came in the evening. Sean replied that the ingredient was rich in various nutrients and wouldn't harm my body, so I should be reassured. Thinking that my body, weaker than others, might be rejecting it strangely, I was reassured by Sean's email that it wouldn't cause health issues, but remembering yesterday's headache and stomachache, I hesitated to eat it again. Feeling it would be wrong to throw it away, I hoped at least Sean could stay healthy, so I added the ingredient to the lunch I made for him every day. This way, Sean could stay healthy, and I wouldn't have to throw it away. I decided to buy supplements and health foods that suited me. After several days, Sean didn't complain of any health issues and continued going to and from work, so I was relieved it was just me it didn't suit. And then, the long-awaited Saturday arrived. Mia hopped into the car that Nina's mom had come to pick her up in, ready for a sleepover. Sean left early in the morning to soak in the hot springs of a local area, allowing me some peaceful time to myself. Occasionally, I received emails from Nina's mom, updating me with photos of their time together. There was Mia, beaming with joy as she baked sweets with Nina. I too indulged myself by going shopping and dining out. Before I knew it, Sunday had arrived. I received a message from Sean saying, I'll be taking Mia to see a movie that's premiering today before we head back home, making me feel a bit guilty for relaxing on my own but also grateful for Sean's thoughtfulness. By evening, when Mia and Sean returned home, Mia's smile was nowhere to be seen. She's been like this all day. She probably missed saying, goodbye, to Nina. Sean explained, and I couldn't help but remember how I used to cry when parting with friends during my childhood, empathizing with Mia's feelings. It must mean she had a great time at Nina's place. Maybe next time we can have Nina come over to our place. I suggested, hoping to give Nina's mom a break as well. Mia nodded slightly and helped me with dinner preparations. Sean excused himself saying, I'm going to take a bath, and left the room. Then, Mia tugged at my sleeve, trying to tell me something. Just as I was about to listen, a loud noise came from the bathroom. Rushing to the scene, I screamed in shock. Sean had collapsed. We need to call an ambulance! I trembled as I reached for my cell phone in my pocket, trying to dial for help while reassuring Mia that everything would be okay. However, Mia, with a calm voice, said. It's okay, we don't need an ambulance. I was taken aback by her words. What are you talking about? Because dad did something bad. God saw it, so it's punishment. I couldn't comprehend what Mia was saying. Prioritizing human life, I convinced Mia to let me call the ambulance despite her remarks. Fortunately, because we were able to call right after the fall, Sean was safe. However, he hadn't regained consciousness yet so he couldn't speak. Since he would be observed at the hospital today and tomorrow, I thanked the staff and left the hospital. Back home with Mia, I remembered what she had tried to say earlier and asked her. Sorry, can you tell me what you were going to say earlier? Mia then shared what happened during her sleepover and while they were watching the movie. 
As I listened, my face turned pale. Mia's story went like this. Recently, before going to bed, I've seen dad walking in front of the house. Nina had said this during the sleepover. But Mia was puzzled. Is that so? But that's around 9 p.m. Dad works much later than that, so it must be someone else. It's not a lie. Let's check it tonight. Mia had insisted, and they spent the night watching the window together. A few minutes after Nina left the room saying she needed to use the bathroom, Mia saw, just as Nina had said, Sean walking in front of the house. But there was a woman walking with him. The woman and Sean were arm in arm, looking very close. Mia, realizing it wasn't me, was shocked. Without telling Nina, she pretended that no one had passed by and went to sleep. When Sunday came and Sean picked her up, Mia could hardly show a smile, still upset about the previous night. Sean, perhaps thinking a movie would cheer her up, took her straight to the cinema. When buying the movie tickets, Sean mentioned he had accidentally bought an extra ticket for mom. Mia chuckled softly, saying, some father you are. However, during the movie, even though Mia tried talking to Sean, he seemed distracted, whispering about something. Hey, my daughter's right here. What? It's fine. She'll be my daughter soon anyway, right? Right, Mia? You'd be happy to have me as your mom since I'm prettier, right? Mia was taken aback, suddenly addressed by a stranger. Sean seemed to have told the woman to stop abruptly addressing them. But after that, it seemed Sean spent the movie cozying up with this unknown woman. Mia realized that the excuse of buying an extra ticket by mistake was a lie. Returning home, the lack of eye contact and smiles from Sean was due to that reason. I was shocked upon hearing the whole story. I didn't want to believe that Sean, who showed no signs of suspicious behavior, could do such a thing behind our backs, as Mia claimed. She wasn't the type to fabricate such lies. While we were talking, Sean's phone, which he had left on the desk since he rushed out without it when taken to the hospital, started receiving notifications. There were several notifications. Curiously, I peeked at the messages and saw they were from a woman, with texts like, enjoyed the movie yesterday, and, how's the plan to kick out your wife going? I was horrified at that moment. Everything Mia said was true. There had been a secret plan to oust me. Desperately, I tried recalling Sean's recent behavior, but since there were no signs, I assumed it hadn't been put into action yet. Then, the hospital called. They wanted me to come in because they had diagnosed Sean's condition. Upon arrival, the doctor said, we believe the cause is excessive consumption of a certain food. Despite being generally healthy, Sean has been consuming a food that causes headaches, nausea, and dizziness from overeating. Do you know of anything he's been eating daily? The doctor's explanation made everything click. The plan Sean and that woman had was to deteriorate my health by making me eat harmful food daily. They intended to live together while I was hospitalized. Sean's recent overtime lies were all to meet this woman. Connecting the dots, Sean's actions and words gradually infuriated me. A nurse informed me that Sean was awake and could talk, so I decided to visit him after calming down. Fortunately, my parents' home was just a 20-minute drive from the hospital, so I dropped Mia off with my mother. Mia, I'm going to have an important talk with your dad now. Be a good girl and wait for a bit, okay? Okay. Mia behaved quietly, as if she understood the situation without being told. I felt terrible for making my young daughter worry. Thinking of Mia filled me with apologies, but also with growing anger towards Sean for cheating so blatantly. As I approached Sean's hospital room, I took a deep breath before entering. But then, I heard voices coming from Sean's room. Peeking through the door's glass, I saw an unfamiliar woman. I cracked the door open slightly, unnoticed, to listen in. Hey, even though you are collapsed, your wife hasn't come to care for you, right? Isn't that awful? Unbelievable. You should divorce her immediately. I know. And that woman, she's still thick-skinned enough not to fall ill? Hearing this, I realized it was indeed this woman's doing. I couldn't stay silent any longer and knocked on the door loudly. At the sound, Sean and the woman quickly turned towards the door. Am I interrupting something? 
I said, as they both looked as if they had seen a ghost. When I said that, both of them looked as if they had seen a ghost. The woman, despite being shaken, stood up from her chair. Ah, uh, are you his wife? I'm Sean's co-worker from the office. Just came to visit him because I was worried. Well, I'll be leaving now. She attempted to flee hastily after saying so. I blocked the door, determined not to let her escape. Since you've come all this way, why don't you stay a little longer? I said to the woman with a smile. She was looking everywhere but at me. My husband, thinking he hadn't been caught yet, feigned ignorance. Ah. Uh. Yes, that's right. Why don't you stay a bit longer? He was sweating profusely, his voice tone noticeably off. A weird tension filled the air between the three of us. The slightest move from me, and the woman flinched. Given that I was leaving our daughter with my parents, I didn't want to waste more time and cut straight to the chase. So, you've been having an affair with this woman? Sean, caught off guard by my blunt question, immediately denied it. What are you talking about? That's not true, she's just a co-worker. Really? So co-workers normally go to movies with each other's kids, joking about being potential spouses? I asked, a hint of sarcasm in my voice, leaving them speechless. They began to give in, heads hanging low, but I wasn't ready to forgive just yet. Oh, by the way, the food you gave me didn't sit well with me because of my allergies. So, I packed it in your lunchbox instead. I mentioned, which suddenly made my husband regain his composure, glaring at me as he shouted. Hey! What were you thinking? That's why I am in the hospital unconscious right now. Really? It was that dangerous? I heard from you it was supposed to make me feel better, so I thought it'd help you recover, I feigned ignorance. Uh, that is... It's sad, isn't it? Trying to make me unconscious, and your plan completely backfired. Never thought it'd end up in your own lunchbox, did you? I chuckled, taunting him with my words. Sean was utterly defeated, his eyes void of any life. He had drowned in his own schemes. Next, I turned my attention to the woman. So, you're the one who's been throwing herself at a married man. Don't forget, you're also at fault here. Expect a hefty sum for damages, I declared. The woman immediately turned defensive. Why should I have to pay? Sean was the one who said he needed comforting and came on to me. I'm a victim here. Oh, so it's all on my husband, is it? Then, would you mind showing me your email exchanges with him right now? If you're a victim, you wouldn't have been actively engaging with him, right? Th that is. She was taken aback. Realizing her strategy was futile, she quickly changed her tune and knelt down in apology. Please, I'm sorry. Just forgive me this once. Kneeling won't get you forgiveness. Expect a notice from my lawyer at your house. I said, leaving the two pale-faced and on the verge of tears behind as I exited the room. I immediately headed to my parents' house where I had left my daughter. Welcome back. Your daughter has been a good girl. Sorry for dropping her off so suddenly. Also, I'll be divorcing Sean, so can I stay here for a while? I sprung the news on my mother, who was visibly shocked. But as I explained the situation, she empathized with me. So that's what happened. Then, from today, you'll stay here. Your father will go get your things. Without prying further, my mother was ready to protect me and my daughter. I felt a warm tear as I appreciated my mother's generosity. I gently explained to my daughter that we couldn't live with Sean anymore. To my surprise, she said. I don't like Papa because he was nice to someone who's not Mama. I want to live at Grandma's house. My daughter, despite her age, had sensed that Sean was doing something wrong. Thank you. From now on, I'll make sure we're both happy, just the two of us. I promised her. When my father came home from work, he packed up the necessary items from my house after I explained the situation. The next day, Sean was discharged from the hospital. We timed our visit to confront Sean as he returned home. As soon as I arrived, he immediately apologized. 
I'm really sorry. I've realized that what matters most to me is you and our daughter. I'll cut ties with that woman, please forgive me. His apology was too little, too late for me. I can't start over with someone who tried to trap me. Could you just sign the divorce papers? I said with a sigh. My father, standing behind me, didn't hold back either. Listen, Sean. I can't let my precious daughter live with someone like you. If you truly care about Kate and our granddaughter, then it's even more reason to divorce. Sean, overwhelmed by my father's stern words, tearfully signed the divorce papers. And remember, we'll be filing for damages from you and that woman. Signing these papers isn't the end. I said disdainfully as I left the house. Eventually, we managed to claim a significant amount in damages from both Sean and the woman. Working at the same company, their affair quickly became the subject of office gossip. Unable to bear the rumors, the woman soon quit her job. The alimony forced her into debt, leading to a difficult life. Sean, too, faced ostracization from neighbors and colleagues, with no chance of promotion at work. He was now treated like a pariah. I switched from part-time to full-time work, striving for a better life for my daughter and me. My efforts were recognized with a raise, allowing us to lead a fulfilling life. My daughter's happiness is now my top priority. With this in mind, I'm committed to providing a loving and supportive environment for her every day.